name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On the road to Emmaus in, in Luke, <clears throat> the 24th chapter, we find something that's deeper than just a mere walk. And I speak, of, of course, of the resurrection of Christ and Him being able to express to them that He had risen, He had risen indeed. But what's interesting is this entire, this entire walk and discussion between these people and Jesus were simply, it was simply that. It was a walk. They were walking and they were discussing things much like a repast or a memorial meal or whatever you may have after a funeral they were discussing what had happened it says in our text and they stood still well i first the question what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk and then they stood still looking sad that's what they give us looking sad now we don't really know what sad means and I don't think that we need to because I believe that it's all encompassing I, I believe that when they say that they look that they're looking sad they're looking sad because Christ had been crucified and also sad because this person that was walking with them didn't even know who Jesus was or that he had been crucified. How sad for him. Because at this point, they had no idea. So he says to them, Are you only a visitor? Do you not know the things that have happened in these days? And Jesus simply asked, and I love this, What things? You tell me the things that you saw. You tell me. Well, of course, the things of Jesus of Nazareth, the, the mighty prophet in deed and word before God and, and all people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. Up to that point, we're all like, yes, that's what happened. Yes, crucifixion. Yes, our sins are forgiven. Yes. Then we get to this point. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. That's enough to make anyone sad. But to them, there was a finality to Christ's crucifixion. And that's the thing. That would make anyone sad. We had hoped that he would be, uh, that we knew that he was a mighty prophet in both word and deed. They had seen Him heal. They had seen Him feed. They had seen Him wash. They had seen Him do all of these miraculous epiphanies. And so they knew that He was a mighty prophet. Yet, their hope seems to have been dashed. They had hoped that He would be the one to redeem Israel. And... If, if, and get this, not only did we hope that he was the one to redeem Israel, but also we have women coming to us saying that he's not even in his tomb anymore. And Jesus says, calls them and says to them, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Now, let's unpack that just a little bit. They were sad because Christ had been crucified. And they were sad because Christ did not know that Christ had been crucified, according to their point of view. And so Christ asked them, well, what things have happened? And they tell him, and then he says this, 
Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer all things and enter into glory? And all of a sudden, Christ knows everything. And yet they don't know, they don't recognize Christ. All along, of course, Christ knew what had happened, that from his incarnation to his deliverance, to his crucifixion, and then to his resurrection and to his walking with his friends. He knew all of that. But he said these words. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter, enter into glory? Was it not necessary? Was it not necessary that Christ would suffer die and be raised again. And that's a direct hit to this phrase. But we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. What fools they are. And truly what fools we are. Do you not believe that it's necessary for Christ to die? Do we not believe that it's necessary for Christ to be raised again? Is it not necessary that we should be, that he, that he should ascend into heaven? Is it not necessary that we should be baptized? Is it not necessary that we should eat of Christ's body and blood during this time of pandemic and, 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 and being afraid? Is it not necessary to have a little boldness and a little backbone to have faith in Christ? Maybe have just a little gumption. Maybe to not look so sad and so slack jawed, but maybe to actually toughen up a little bit and say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that I know that neither death nor life nor anything else can separate me from the love that is in, that is in Christ Jesus. Thus, it is necessary. All of those things are necessary. And it all begins with this. The beginning of Moses and the prophets and the rest of Scripture. And so here we find that this text is not a mere walk alone. It's eschatological. Which means the end times. And we are living in birth pains right now. We are in gestation. We are growing in Christ, being fed, having been washed. And the labor pains have, become, have begun, death all around us, sickness of all, of all, all types, in, in, in immeasurable types of sickness. COVID-19 is just just happens to be uh, highlighted right now, but there are tons of sicknesses that people have that are dealing with them right now that have been completely forgotten. There are homeless people who have been completely forgotten. There are people who are suffering that have been completely forgotten. Why? Because COVID and, the, and Fox News, CNN, whatever, uh, live... Uh, Facebook feed, you, you can't get any other information than this. Be afraid, be scared, COVID's coming to get you. Grow a backbone. Have faith. We are living in the eschatological times. We are living in the times in which, in the, in the now and the not yet, when Christ will come to judge the living and the dead. And as we wait, like virgins who trim their wicks, we do the same thing that happens on this road. We hope. The same things that happen to these men. Jesus, and then we, then we must ask ourselves, Jesus, are you but a mere visitor? Are you a mere visitor amongst us? Do you come when we call? Are you Jesus of the lamp 
that if you rub him, he will grant you the wishes. And when you don't need him, you put him up on the shelf and say, later on. Oh, COVID-19. Let's take him down, rub the lamp. Please make this go away. Thank you. Put him back up. So is he just a visitor among us? I mean, doesn't he know what's going on? Doesn't he know the things that have happened in Hickory, North Carolina, Catawba County, North Carolina, the United States, the world? Doesn't he know? Jesus asks us, what things? What things are going on? Because do you not know that it was necessary that I would suffer and die for all of this, for all of you? Let me tell you of the law of Moses, which I fulfilled. Let me tell you of the prophets who begged to see my day and saw it and were glad. Let me interpret unto you scripture. And just in case your hope wanes, and it does, and you, when you look sad and slack-jawed and when you look as if you are fearful and when you are fearful and in these days when, well, we're going to die, quite frankly, we hear these words. Am I sure I'm right? Am I sure that Christ is the Messiah? What if I'm wrong? There are a lot of other religions out there and there's a whole internet, or so I hear, there's a whole internet full of people who have opinions that are just as valid as, as anyone else's. And they believe in all kinds of gods. How can a God, if there is a God, do such terrible things to his creation, to his people? What kind of a God would do that? God is just a bully with a magnifying glass zapping all of his little ants that he created. As a comedian once said, that when, when God created him and then he messes up, it's not right for God to blame it on the man. It's like when a car company builds a car and then you, you, the car breaks down and you blame it on the car instead of the car company. And that's what we do in our times of doubting, in our times of struggle, in our times of sin. We kick the tires, we slam the door, and we say, look at this car. They created it, and it's a piece of junk. And the law tells us, yes, you are. Repent. Repent. And of all of those things, those are all the reasons that you need to know that it was and is and always will be including the eschatological, the end times, as we wait here for Christ. That's why we must know that it was, is, and will be necessary that Christ should suffer all things and enter into glory. And continuing in our text, so they drew near to the village to which they were going. And he, being Christ, acted as if he were going farther. But he urged them strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward the evening, and the day is now far spent. That right there is an eschatological end times, the return of Christ, the waiting for the return of Christ statement. In our lives, in every section of life, every time of life, we're dying. Not to be too cheerful, but it's a reality. 
We all draw nearer to death. And we're all living now in evening. It's drawing towards evening and our lives are far spent. What then shall we do? Well, it's awfully good for us to ask Jesus, stay with us, for it is evening and the day is far spent. Jesus, stay with me. Forgive me for my doubts. Forgive me for, for, uh, uh, for my malice. Forgive me for hating my neighbor. Forgive me for ignoring the sick. For, forgive me for, for ignoring the poor. But I still, even, with, even though I have done all those things, I still need you with me. Please be with me. I need you. I need you. I have to have my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, crucified and risen and entering into His glory. Because without that, when the evening comes and the day is far spent, that's it. We're done. There's nothing else. If Christ does not stay with us, that's it. Hellfire awaits us. But as it is, Christ does stay with us. In fact, He was named that. Emmanuel. God with us. And after He died and He rose again, He said to His disciples, I will be with you always, even unto the end of of the age. Christ being with us is the most important thing to any Christian. If Christ is not with us, we are not Christians. If Christ is not with us, we are of no good to one another. If Christ is not with us, we are simply social distancing like zombies. And so when we pray, God be with us, Christ stay with us, because we're afraid it's toward evening and the day is far spent. I, the day is ending, our lives are ending. We need you to be with us, and yet we can't see. We can't see who you are. We can't see where you are. Just like they were walking on Emmaus, we cannot see that it's Christ in our midst. And so Jesus says, don't worry about it. I've got it all figured out. You want me to be with you, I shall be with you. And what does he do so that they would know that he was with them? So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and they vanished, and he vanished from their sight. So when we beg Christ to be with us, please, we need you. Why can't we see you? He gives us His Lord's Supper. And He says, here I am. Take, eat, take, drink. And our eyes are opened. That's why we can't worship anywhere else. We must be where the Eucharist is because when the, where, the, where the Eucharist is, there is the opening of eyes. Where the Eucharist is, there is the washing of, the, of, the, of our vocal cords that spill so much sin is soothed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we consume Him so fully that He becomes, or that, that we become sinless, forgiven. And our eyes are opened and we recognize Him for who He is. Christ, the risen one. And we arise and we run out and we tell the tale. And we proclaim his death until that evening comes. Until that time is far spent. 
when that eschatological, until that eschatological time, that time when Christ comes again, the end times, we will continue to do this. We will continue to pray, stay with us, Lord, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. Feed us, Lord. He will take bread, bless it, break it, and give it to, give it to you, saying, take, eat, this is my body, take, drink, this is my blood. He has washed you in the waters of holy baptism. And so we wait, continuously eating this meal. But the reason, the true reason that makes this an end time, an eschatological text, is because what we eat there and what has opened our eyes here on this, veil, on this side of the veil of tears is a foretaste of what we will see in heaven and what we will taste and eat in heaven. And so when this evening and day is far spent, the new dawn will come. And in that new dawn, the resurrection of the dead. And in the resurrection of the dead, we will hunger no more, neither thirst, but the Paschal Lamb will be there with us to give us Himself in heaven for all of eternity. Thanks be to God that even in our most desperate hours, even now when we can't when we can't commune, when, when, we, when we have been making appointments to commune, remember that you have communed, all of the times that you have communed and that you have eaten and your eyes have been opened, all of that sustains you through the darkest of times, whether it's COVID or whether it's that sin that you know exactly what I'm talking about. That sin or those sins that you just can't get out of your head. Open your eyes. Eat, drink, open your eyes. And when you see with your eyes and you recognize Him, grow that backbone. And tell a world who thinks that you're silly and stupid, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And if you don't like it, then your day is far spent. But as it is, we look forward to that. We look forward to the dawning and the, and the resurrection of the dead that's connected to Christ's own resurrection. Thanks be to God that our hearts burn within us as we pray to Christ and as we hear his word and as we receive his sacraments. Thanks be to God, for the Lord has risen indeed, appeared to Simon, to us in the breaking of the bread, and into eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.